Okay, now we're ready to continue our review for the Unit 2 uh, lecture exam by doing uh, Interlude B, uh, Surface Veneer, Sediments and Soils. So we've already explored what igneous rocks are. Now we're ready to start talking about sedimentary rocks. But before we can talk about them, we have to know where sedimentary rocks come from, which is going to be sediments. So in your textbook, you should be reading Interlude B. And let's begin by uh, some definitions. You've got to know the definition of what sediment is. So sediment is going to be pieces of rock, uh, shells, or mineral crystals that precipitated from water. So the, the first picture is of pieces of rock. The second picture is of shells that could be glued together to make a sedimentary rock. The final picture is uh, a picture of what happens when carbon dioxide mixes with ocean water, makes calcite that precipitates to the bottom of the ocean floor, and then that again is a sediment that can be glued together to make a sedimentary rock. Weathering. So weathering is a process that breaks up rock, turning it into a sediment. So you should know the different kinds of weathering. So there are two kinds of weathering, physical weathering and chemical weathering. So let's begin with the physical weathering. In physical weathering, it doesn't change the identity of the rocks. All it does is it breaks the rock apart into smaller rocks. So it's still the same rock, it's just smaller. And so there are several different kinds of physical weathering that you need to know. So you need to know what unloading is. How does unloading cause weathering? Okay, you should know how when water freezes, it expands. And so this is going to be called frost wedging and how ice can break apart rocks. Okay, when salt uh, is, um, turns into a solid, so salt can be dissolved in water. When it starts to crystallize, the crystals will, will start to expand. And then those crystals can put pressure on rock, and then that's going to be called salt wedging. Heat can do the same thing. So thermal expansion. So this is another form of physical weathering. Then uh, organic materials, like the roots of trees, can get into cracks and cause expansion. And then animals. So animals can also disrupt uh, the ground and rocks and move things around. Okay, then you've got chemical weathering. So in chemical weathering, now the minerals that make up the rocks are going to be chemically altered. And so this is going to change the identity of the rocks and the minerals. So one example is uh, dissolution. And so an example of this is when you take salt and you put it into water, it dissolves so that the water molecules pull apart the mineral. Okay, then you've got hydrolysis, which is the going to be a chemical reaction of the water with the mineral. So notice that in this case, the, the water molecules didn't actually uh, um, attach themselves to the salt, but it pulled the salt apart. But you still have salt you have the, uh, the chlorine ions that are being surrounded by the water molecules, but the water molecules are not chemically bonding to, the, uh, to those. Well, in this case, now you have, actually have a chemical reaction in which the water is chemically being bonded and making new minerals. 
Okay, so then the next one is oxidation. Uh, this is rust. So when oxygen uh, mixes with certain minerals, it rusts the minerals. So an example of this would be hematite. Okay, and then uh, what are the products of weathering? So there are three primary products of weathering. Quartz, clay, and rust. So notice that the quartz tends to just be broken down into smaller pieces of quartz. So quartz is very stable under surface pressures and temperatures. Uh, things like the feldspars and amphiboles, though, they turn into clay. And then the kinds of minerals that have the most amount of iron in them, such as pyroxene and olivine, they rust and they turn into hematite. So make sure and know what are the three primary products of weathering. And then there's other things that go into solution and are carried away by the water. So you notice that silica, the silica tetrahedrons, can also be dissolved and then they flow away with the water. Uh, also, some of those ions can go into the water. So things such as uh, magnesium and calcium and aluminum, for example. So all of those can be carried away with the water. And then how do physical and chemical weathering work together? So this would make, make for a good essay question. So mechanical weathering breaks apart the rock and when the rock is broken apart, it has more surface area. That means that there's now more area that for chemical reactions to take place on. Chemical weathering changes the minerals in a rock, makes it easier for the rock to fall apart. And so that helps with the physical weathering. So let's take a break. When we come back, we will talk about what soil is. <laughs>